capturing the enemy must first find him. <laughs> oh, that's a fine way to ruin a quiet vacation cruise, Silver. And I thought pirates were boarding the Sea Hound. What a disappointment. That's the trouble with you, boys. You're scared too easy. You broke most unwelcome dream, in which I was a great Mandarin with untold wealth and many wives. <laughs> Is that bad, Cookie? Happiness was too great. One wife, sufficient joy for any man. Well, I reckon I aim to find out myself someday. Say, so, looking here, Silver, you said we were going to take a nice, lazy cruise now that we got them there river smugglers in the lockup. Tex, what's better than a bow cutting full into the sea? Steep roll of a deck. Salt spray coming over the side, hitting you in the face. One breath of warm south wind and a plain sailorman changed to a poet. And we may find another exciting adventure, isn't that right, Captain? I reckon we've had enough excitement for a spell. I am to take it just plumb lazy. You very near that great desire. <laughs> you know, Cookie, I never can tell whether you're stroking me or rough on me. Your turn the galley this week, isn't it, Cookie? What have we got from this? Slight change, Captain. We eat buckaroo chow instead. You know, that's another thing I can't understand. When I was playing cards before I could fork a maverick, I play with Cookie every time and he wins, and I wind up doing the cooking. You should stick to your tricks with that lariat, Dex. Oh, I did. I roped everything on deck. Then Cookie throws the rope up in the air and it stands right straight up. You know, Silver, that guy's a magician. Answer simple. Wisdom is magic. Yeah, well, you better watch that, because someday I'm going to get wise to it. Uh, Jerry, full sail, for and after. All right, Captain. Boy. They can come in by phone and save time. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Come in. Come in. Hear you. What ship are you? The Yacht Admiralta, under attack by pirates. What's your position? Latitude 23 degrees south. Location known as Typhoon Cove. What's your longitude? See, I'm calling Esmeralda. See how I'm calling Esmeralda. Come in, Esmeralda. Watch your longitude. Crack out a chart. Locate Typhoon Cove. Send decks on deck. Stop the engine. Jerry, you and Peck stand by the sail. Full speed ahead. Yes. Hey, what's up, Jerry? Pick up an SOS. Something's gonna happen. Oh, well, here we go again. Come on, Tex. Full speed ahead. We can hold out. We'll have to try to reach the launch. They're boarding the yacht. We'll have to get back. You two start toward the launch. Keep low. Bardman, you protect Dan. We'll cover. They're making for the launch. Take some men and head them off.
save your ammunition. They've probably taken over the Esmeralda by now. Try to get it back. Take a run for it. I'll keep firing. Stand here. See that helmet? We can reach that. We can make our last fight a good one. Good. You're on time, Lon. What's the news? It's good, Admiral. All good. We've taken the yacht. What about those on board? Vanilla Pete hasn't caught on the beach. Did the yacht take off? It's headed for Diamond Cove. And we took over before any message got out? Not exactly, Admiral. We got to the radio operator after he sent out an SOS and made contact with another ship. Come on, out with it. What other ship? It was the Sea Hound. So your news is all good, is it? Well, maybe so. The captain of the Sea Hound at last. I've always wanted to match with, with him. Right now, we'll just get rid of the people who've landed on my island. Captain's bad medicine. We'll take care of the captain when he arrives. Maybe I'll let you take care of him. Will you, Admiral? Can I have him? He has a reputation through all the islands. He's a tough man, Singapore. My knife cuts through the toughest skin. I keep it sharp, very sharp. Can I have him, Admiral? Maybe it's better to keep him off the island right now. Send out a radio to the Sea Hound casting that SOS. We'll make sure the Sea Hound picks it up. Of course, you fool. And don't take the Esmeralda to Diamond Cove. Scuttle it. But you wanted the yacht. Cutlet. Captain's coming, don't you know? Get back to the yacht. Send that message. We're going back to our ship, Singapore. Thanks to the crew and the guests of the Esmeralda for your offer of help. But the yacht is completely out of danger and heading west at normal cruising speed. We'll sign off now, Sea Hound. Signing off, Esmeralda. Well... Now I reckon we can go back to just being late. Not so fast, Tex. Our course still set for Typhoon Cove. Oh, now, wait a minute. We don't have to go looking for trouble, do we? Well, you wouldn't run away from it, would you? Well, I sure wouldn't. Well, we'll hold the course. If they got in trouble once, they can get in trouble again. Just go up and deck. We'll leave Jerry at the wheel. Okay.
sight, Silver. Anything in sight on shore? I'll have a look. Stand by to lower sails. All right, sir. Nothing's turning ashore, Captain. Good racing then, Silver. But we didn't win anything. Race run and loss. Better than race not run at all. Just when I thought everything was going to be nice and quiet and peaceful. You know you like a Tex. It was exciting. Well, we could lay two for a couple of days. Do a little fishing. That's better than nothing. Nothing's just what I aim to do. And I aim to do it lying down. You're not going to be doing nothing very long, Tex. Jerry, oversight with the spray hound. Hi, sir. Cookie, you stay here. Keep watch while we're gone. We'll expect trouble, so we'll be ready. Now, those shots came from that rise of ground to the south. We'll be the north of the cove. Come up behind who's ever doing the attack. Come on, Tex. I'm sure the people on that boat heard those shots. We'll have to try and cover anyone who comes ashore. I told you we should have rushed them. Now we're liable to get into trouble. We've got to finish them off before help arrives from that ship. Order everybody to move in fast. too soon. Anyone hurt? No, we were in good protection. Stanley Rand at your service. I'm captain of the Sea Hound. This is Tex, one of the crewmen. Thanks, Captain. Tex, and may I present the captain of the Sea Hound, Tex, How and Whitney. This is Mr. Vardman, gentlemen. Vardman. Mr. Ahrens and Mr. Little, seamen of the Yacht Esmeralda. First, I'd like to ask your two crewmen to take the prisoner back to our launch. 
Little and Aarons, uh, take charge of the prisoners. Yes, sir. I'm curious, Mr. Rand, to find out why you sent that second radio message that you were out of danger. We didn't. The yacht was pirated. We never got back on board. I suspected something of the sort. That's why we kept our course and boys arrived in time. Captain, look, I think Cookie's in trouble. He can handle everything. Let's get back to the spray hound. wait here. Tex and I are going to have a look around. I'd like to join you, Captain. Bartman, will you stay with Ann? See that they get a proper burial. Thank you. What happened? Did you find any trace of them? Yes, both the seamen dead and the prisoner gone. Captain, I don't want to leave this island. That's pretty hard to understand, Miss Whitney. I just can't bring myself to leave. Suppose we discuss it on the captain of the ship, Anne. That's fine. Let's get aboard. Gunned Admiral. The whole crew of the Sea Hound was behind us. You mean all three of them? Well, yeah, yeah. They, they, they were armed with machine guns. I have a dozen, all brave and fearless until the captain sails into view. But I. Never mind the excuses, Pete. You'll get another chance. The Sea Hound is heading south. Heading for Diamond Cove, by all reckoning. Get there before morning, Pete, and arrange a proper welcome for the Sea Hound and her celebrated skipper. Right. When you get there, save them for me. The Admiral said he was mine. Don't raise your hopes too high, Singapore. I have a feeling that before we're through, you and I will have to do the whole job. We've laid our course south, Mr. Rand, along the coast. I certainly hope we can find your yacht. Thank you, Captain. And we also thank you for a very excellent supper. I discovered I was very hungry. Uh, Miss Whitney, do you mind telling me why you didn't want to leave the island? I can explain that, Captain. We were to meet Miss Whitney's father here. But we didn't find him. I, I wanted to stay and wait. I didn't realize the danger. Well, you think something may have happened to him? I'm afraid there's no other explanation. Well, why did you pick out a spot like Typhoon Cove to try to find him? Well, I, I think I can explain. You see, 
For many years, Father's been making a careful study of an ancient legend concerning these islands. It tells of a treasure, gold, on Spanish galleons sunk in these waters many centuries ago. Yes, I've heard about that legend, but there's never been any proof there was anything but a legend. That's the point. We believe that Whitney discovered it wasn't just a legend, but actual truth. He suggested as much in the last radio message we received from him. And in that message, he said he was coming to this island. And when no further messages came, why well, I brought Anne here. Father's devoted his life to a foundation to fight tropical diseases. He's always believed that every disease is spread by carriers originating in tropical areas. And experiments now in progress tend to prove his theory. Father's idea was to use the gold of this island legend to carry on the work of the foundation. He planned to barter for the treasure. Well, you think somebody may have found out what he was after? Yes, that's what we're afraid of. Do you know anyone he might have contacted on the island? We haven't the biggest idea. I can think of one man who might link up with what has happened. He's known only as the Admiral. I remember the prisoner we took, a white man disguised as a native. From what I've heard of the Admiral, he's not above doing tricks like that. Do you know where this man is to be found? Well, you'll find signs of him everywhere. He's a power in these islands, an evil power. He's feared and obeyed. He has spies in every settlement, on every trading schooner that flies these waters. He, uh, he poses as a traitor. I think that piracy is more in his line. It's also rumored that he owns a rubber plantation deep in the jungles on the island. I've never run into anybody that has seen the plantation and come out alive. So I think this, Miss Whitney, if your father has run into trouble, I think the Admiral has a hand in it because he doesn't want anybody to leave the island. Then our first job is to find this Admiral. I think he's already found us. Now we have two jobs, to help find this Whitney's father and to locate your yacht. Oh, but we can't ask you to place your ship and crew in danger, Captain. You don't need to ask. The Seahound goes in search of adventure. You brought it aboard. Truth is, Captain, we'd be helpless without you. Good, then it's a bargain. I'm sure that you're tired. I'll have Cookie show you to your cabins. ready to go into Diamond Beach settlement. I want to find out if the Esmeralda passed here. Could we go along, Captain? Well, certainly, if you'd like to. I could make inquiries about my father. He may have stopped here. I hope he did. All ready, Jerry? Ready, Captain. Good. Let's go. for a game of checkers. Reckon you pick on plan for a steak. Whoever loses washes dishes one week. What, with all the visitors on board? Okay, Cookie, I'll take you on, but not checkers. You name own medicine. Let's make a dominoes. I stand a chance at that. Or do I? should be in our hands by now. Should be. Better be. What about the rest of the captain's party? They're coming ashore in the launch. They'll be well taken care of by Singapore when they reach the float. Captain, there's a mooring ahead. I'm heading for it, Jerry. be the fate of those left aboard the Sea Hound. What sinister scheme is the Admiral planning now? Don't miss Spanish Gold, the second thrilling chapter of the Sea Hound at this theater next week.
hoping to find Rand's stolen yacht, also to trace Anne's father, Captain Silver and his party head for the island in the Sea Hound's launch. Unaware that the powerful Admiral has ordered his men to prevent their landing, they approach the Kanoa settlement where... Captain, there's a mooring ahead. I'm heading for it, Jerry. Somebody tried to blow us up, Captain. That wasn't a whale spouting, Rand. Whatever it was, we can thank the Captain for bringing us out of it. You saw something, Captain. What was it? It was a wire running up under the water to the bottom of the float. I wonder if Tex and Cookie heard the bass back on the sea, huh? I wonder. Now's the time for one of those double-barreled inventions of yours, Cookie. No need to make use of secret weapons until occasion demands, friend Tex. Stop that gambling. Do a good job on that when he's tricky, and then we'll shove off. Have we better radio? Oh, yeah. No names. The rest of this crew won't stay ashore forever. Yeah, if they live long enough to get ashore. Now, Fetcher. You're doing that the hard way, Cookie. If those men had seen the dog, they would have killed him. questions over there. No, that's a pretty name. It means place of great joy or something like that. It runs through the form, it'll probably be a place of great smells. this place. Nobody, it runs itself. Who, who owns it? Old Skinfoot, named Van Watt. Thanks. We'd uh, like to ask you a few questions. Go ahead. It's your breath. This gentleman, Jot, the Esmeralda was stolen, sailed off in this direction. Did you see it go past here? Didn't come near here, past here, or stop here. Anything else? Well, maybe you didn't see it. I didn't, but you're welcome just the same. You must be my guest. I was about to eat. Dinner is two dollars. Charlie. We're wasting time here. Bartman and I'll look around outside. At least you'll join me in a cool drink of fruit juice. There'll be no charge for that. Whitney came here looking for her father. Do you know any man of that name? I have a very poor memory of names. Don't worry. We've only started to look. What ship did you come in? The sea Hound. Ever hear of her? Oh, yes. Everybody's heard of her. Being as she's your ship, you must be the captain. At your service. Provided, of course, you're a friend. Get those sails up and stand by to cast off. Oh, yeah, Cookie, I can't wait to get to them imitation natives. The situation calls for brains instead of brawn. You use the brains. All I want is one crack at the painted horse thief. All in good time. Now you will stand by the number three switch while I have one small look. Oh, 
Okay, Cookie, now what do we do with them? They came from the sea. We will return them to it. Right. them for Captain Silver. He would not want them. Besides, you'd have to cook for them. I'll make some inquiries next door. You'll find nothing there that I don't know. Yeah, we'll try anyway. If I hear anything of your father, I'll let you know at once. Thank you. You intend to stay long? Perhaps. Sir, are those shells for sale? No, but you may look at them as much as you wish. All right, Jerry. We'll be next door. I don't like that man. I don't think he'd tell us anything, even if he knew. Perhaps. You meet some strange characters in these islands. You better report to the Admiral, but don't make us look too bad. Tell him the Sea Hound called for a big boarding party. You now check on the shore party. I saw the small boat down the beach. Captain come here for any special reason? No, he didn't even intend to stop here. But now he's trying to help Mr. Rand to find his yacht. Don't you really know what's happened to it? Of course not. Hasn't your captain any idea? No. How many men aboard your ship? Two, why? Oh, I was just wondering. Tell you where you can get some nice shells like mine. Where? Right down the beach in that direction. Look in the tide hollers around the rocks. Gee, thanks a lot. Find us. Where did he go? Well, next door. I was looking for you. I thought. Uh, Where did he go, Van Wart? Well, he he was interested in the shells. Maybe maybe he went out to search for some. Which way? Down the beach. If anything happens to that boy, Van Wart, I'll hold you responsible. And don't you forget it. down the beach, but I've had some luck. See what I found. We'll have to wait. You and Vardman take Miss Whitney back to the ship and stand by. Is anything wrong? I don't know. He said something about Jerry. We better do as he said.
We can still catch them. No, never mind, Jerry. They're only natives. No, they weren't. They were disguised white men. Disguised white men? Just as in the attack on the Rand party, huh? We've got to find out who's behind this. Did that man at the trading post send you into a trap? You mean Mr. Van Warren? Yeah. No, I don't think so. He just told me where I could find some seashells. We better get back to the ship. There are a lot of things that need explaining. Yes, we had visitors as expected, but got rid of them easily with the husky assistance of old cowhand Tex. <laughs> well, it was Cookie did it with those magic tricks. Yeah. I know you both. <laughs> I mean, you all did, Betsy. You all did. <laughs> Sometimes dog is master of situation. How about some food? We're all starved. It's cooking. <laughs> Come on, Betsy. Come on, boy. Oh, uh, this is what I wanted to show you. I bought it from a beach comb. It's supposed to be a map showing where there's something Spanish treasure. Selling those things to newcomers is quite an industry. Feels like the real parchment. You think it's authentic? Might be. Why should anyone sell it? Well, even if the average beachcomber knew where there was treasure, he'd be too lazy to go after it. Can you decipher it? Yeah, I can try. Seems like an odd mixture of Spanish words and native symbols. If you let me have it, I'll work on it tonight. I wish you would. Well, if this is the real thing, Cookie, we'll need them. Somebody from the island should be out after them. It's time to relieve Tex on watch. Now, Cookie, keep always on the alert. There's a lot of people around here that don't like us. Feeling is mutual. I'll take over for a while. You go wake up Tex so he can eat. Let old cowhand sleep. Cookie will see to breakfast. <laughs> What's the matter, Captain? Can't you make it out? I can make it out all right. These figures don't make sense. How do you mean? Good morning, everybody. You've been working all night? Good morning, Ann. As I was saying, Cookie and I decided this location represents the lagoon of which we're now anchored. That's correct. This symbol is a sunken Spanish galleon. Well, can we find out? Easily with our diving equipment, but that's not what worries me. Look at this. Another symbol exactly like the first. Another ship? Perhaps. Look at the location. Miles Inland. Well, those islands are volcanic. Uh, perhaps one of them rose up out of the sea and brought the galleon with it. That's as good a guess as any. But it makes me wonder if I read this map correctly. Well, can't we investigate that lagoon over there? I intend to. Right after breakfast. Breakfast ready if you are. Also diving equipment for walk on bottom of sea. Thank you, Cookie. I marvel at the efficiency of your servants. They're not my servants, Rand. They're my partners. Well, then that explains it. Are you really going down to look for that galleon? Yes, Miss Whitney. Right after we get breakfast. says the sea hound's underway again. Which way is she headed? Inshore. Lookout says he also saw diving equipment on board. It means the captain may be on the track of something. If he goes underwater, we can take care of him. Well, maybe the captain will do the diving. From what I know of the captain, he does his own dangerous work. Order our diver to stand by for a job. Yes, sir. If I take it right, we are directly over the wreck. Anyway, we're close enough I can find it. Well, uh, watch out for sharks. Thanks for the cheerful thought. If you see one, Tex, rope it, will you? Oh, I'll do that.
captain has gone in the water alone. The Admiral will give big reward for anyone who disposes of this captain. come out openly as an enemy? Who are these strange natives? And who is their prisoner? Don't fail to see the mystery of the map, the third thrill-packed chapter of the Sea Hound, at this theater next week. Searching for lost Spanish gold, Captain Silver dives at a location indicated on the map, which Rand claims he bought from a beachcomber. Learning of this, the Admiral sends a native diver to attack Silver in the depths of the ocean.
Find anything kept sober? Yeah, chest. It was empty. You mean someone else has been there? Looks that way, Ann. Anybody see someone dive into the water? No, why? No, I had breach went down and cut my airline. Are you sure you're all right, Captain Silver? Yeah, I'm all right, Jerry. I'm gonna go into Kanoa and see if I can pick up any information. Do you think the gold might still be somewhere on the island? I don't know about that, man. I do know the Admiral's mixed up in it. The whole thing ties in with a disappearance and father. If that's true, I want to go to the settlement with you. You can count me in, too. <laughs> okay, as soon as I get out of this tuxedo, mine will all go. <laughs> Mr. Van Wart? Good day, my friend. Maybe you're here for a cool drink. No, no thanks. But uh, maybe you could give us some information. What information would I have? Have you ever heard of any treasure being taken from wrecks of ships around here? If by treasure you mean gold, silver, or jewels, if you mean uh, Spanish uh, doubloons, pearls, diamonds, or if you mean uh, precious stones, well, I haven't heard of any, but you might talk to Henry. Henry? Where can I find him? He lives down the shack, down the beach. Don't believe everything he tells you, though. He's slightly balmy. <laughs> Thank you. Rand, you and Miss Whitney stay here. These beachcombers won't talk when there are too many people around. All right. Let me have a native meal prepared for you. Some of the island foods are delicious. Tender swordfish served in plantain leaves and uh, breadfruit chopped. That's all right. You've sold me, Mr. Van Wart, but I warn you, I'm very hungry. Count me in, too. Excellent, excellent. Charlie, have the cook prepare. Is uh, your name Andre? They call me that now. They call me the captain. I've had their view, Mr. Andre, I uh, need your help. But you seem in perfect health. Health? Oh, forgive the wishful thinking of an old man, monsieur. You see, I was a physician in Paris long ago. I sometimes help the islanders. Well, I don't need a doctor. I came to ask about a legendary gold treasure that's said to be on the island. Stop pretty hot. Take it easy. <laughs> certainly can't complain about Van Wart's hospitality. No, but have you noticed the new customers? They don't look very friendly. I can tell you this much. There was once a treasure in the remains of the sunken ship you visited. Gold doubloons amounting to a great fortune. Go on. Long ago, before I came to the island, the gold was recovered by native divers. It was taken away. Where, Doctor? That no one can say. Whoever tried to find out never returned. It is a subject the natives consider taboo. You don't believe in such superstitions. For some taboos, we must have respect. This is one. I can't change your mind? No, monsieur. Andre, can I, uh... I, I, I have little use for money, monsieur. But tobacco? Tobacco. I'll leave a supply for you at the cafe. See you later. Unless you get too close to the gold. And when the hurricane had finally passed, not a tree remained standing. Must have been a bad one. You're not enjoying yourself, Miss Whitney. Oh, yes, I am. Here comes the captain. What success? Uh, not very much. Andre seemed frightened. He said that there was gold found on the wreck, but that the natives had taken it away. Ha! What a stupid legend. Oh, by the way, Andre will be in for some tobacco. See that he gets it. I believe I'm warning. Please excuse me.
missed a good meal. Oh, but not the interesting people. They're still here. Pull your chair and I'll do it for you. Looks like our move is beginning right now. friends are unhurt. I think so. No thanks to the men who attack us. Unfortunately, we have a lot of trash on the island nowadays. Van Ward. You call me, sir? Why do you permit such vermin to infest this rat's nest you call a cafe? It's more like a mud hole than ever. I try my best. To attract more desirable people, but... You're the captain of the Sea Hound, aren't you? Yes, sir. You and your friends must be my guests at my plantation. It would reflect upon our island hospitality to leave you in such surroundings as these. We'll be very happy to accept your invitation. I've heard a great deal about you, Captain. I am the Admiral. Admiral what? Just the Admiral. Now, if you will follow me, please. Nearby, Admiral? Yes, fortunately. Walking is our only way of getting around on these islands. Get back to the Sea Hound. Stand by with Cookie. Okay, but you keep your eye on that character. All three of them. You've got quite a place here, Admiral. Where you grow? Oh, some copra, some rubber. Nothing very impressive. This is lovely. Maybe you'd like to stay. I hope you'll be comfortable here. I'll take pleasure in showing you my place when you join me for dinner. This is Elani. She'll show you to the guest house and take care of Miss Whitney. I'll see you again about seven. Seven's fine, Admiral. accepted the Admiral's invitation. Well, we wanted to find out something about him. This is the best place to do it. Think he had anything to do with the fight in the cafe? Well, I don't think it was because they didn't like us. The Admiral has a hand in everything that happens on the island. Even what happened to my father? Yes, even that. Naturally, I know the captain and his crowd have to be watched. Why do you think I brought them here? I was only asking, Admiral. He may have some information about the treasure. If he has, we'll get it from him. What's he doing here? He's Melee Jim. He's I know who he is. I ask, what's he doing here? He's got something to tell you. Something that happened the first night the Rand Yacht was offshore. All right, let's have it. I was on the beach that night, down by Typhoon Reef. A strange white man, kind of elderly, came out of the jungle and was standing near the water. A small boat put out from the yacht. There were two men in it. The 
elderly man met them and they started talking. The first man seemed to get excited. An argument started, but I was too far away to hear what they were saying. unconscious or dead. I got away from there fast. Why didn't you come and tell me this at once? I tried to, but Black Mike wouldn't let me through the house. He said everybody had to stay away. What did you do then? I went back to look for the old man, but I never found him. Did you recognize the two men from the boat? Yes. They were Rand and Vardman, the two that are here now. And the old man must have been John Whitney. Rand met him after all, lied to the girl. Now, if he got a map, maybe it'll show where the missing gold is. Maybe Whitney got the gold. Maybe. If he's alive, he's probably captured by natives and taken to the interior. We are fools to bother with this old man. Not so. Ilana would wish to see him because he's touched by the moon. We have not far to go now. The journey will be slow because of him. The last to the gold from the sunken ship? Yes, great Kalana. Your commands have been obeyed. Greetings, Gilana. Who is this white man? You know our laws. None of his race shall enter our city and live. I told the Tory we sought kill him. The white man has been touched by the full moon. He neither hears nor speaks. Our law protects us as he. But his mind is gone. So long as the white man is touched by the moon, give him care and protection. But if he's no longer afflicted, I will take his life myself. Now, don't tell me you've all come here looking for gold. No, Admiral, we came in search of Miss Whitney's body. We found no sign of it. When the captain saved our lives and we were attacked by pirates. Admiral, have you any idea who might have attacked us at the cafe and why? There are a lot of bad natives around. Uh, about the treasure, many have tried to find it, myself included. No luck. Perhaps you haven't looked in the right place. Do you know where to look? Personally, I begin to believe the treasure doesn't really exist. Are you sure of that, Admiral? Who can be sure of anything, including what may happen to us tomorrow? I do know this, that if anyone's been near that treasure, he's not alive to tell about it. I hope you'll profit by that. Now, I know you must be tired. Looks like we might have a storm tonight. I suggest that you fasten your windows securely. Yes, sir. That's a good idea. Good night, Admiral. Good night. Good night. Are they trying to fool me? I if that Rand has the map to that treasure. Maybe I can make him part with it. Now smoke. Now 
house is on fire. Helpless prisoner and Whitney's father. Does this mean that the ferocious Ryaks are to attack again? Be sure to see Menaced by Ryaks, the fourth action chapter of the Sea Hound at this theater next week. his men to get the treasure map from Rand, who, with others of Captain Silver's party, is a guest at his plantation. By either accident or design, a fire starts suddenly in the guest house where the party is quartered and... Who started that fire? Followed orders, Edwin. I told you to get the map from Ryan, not burn it up. Now get over there and put that fire out. Are you all right, sir? The Admiral's worried about you. For a while, he had good reason to be. We're all right now, I guess. The Admiral would like you to come to his house. The rest of you go. I'd like to look around a bit. I'll stay with you, Tom. You'll join us later? Sure. Don't look so worried. Everything's under control. I'm most happy that you all escaped injury. We're curious as to why the doors and windows were locked. Yeah, from the outside. My servants probably secured them when the storm threatened. As for the doors, maybe the dampness caused the wood to swell. By the way, uh, where is the captain? Oh, he and Jerry stayed out to see if they could figure what started the fire. I shall be most interested in their conclusions. Nothing to show what actually started the fire. But I'm sure it's the Admiral's work. What do we do? Have a showdown with him? No, we'll sit tight, Jerry. I came here after information. I still want it. What was that? Oh, well, it came from out of the jungle. Ah! Sit tight with the others. If the Admiral gets curious, stall him. 
But, Captain, I... Watch yourself. Some more, or are you ready to tell where the treasure is? Oh, I can't tell you. I tell you, I don't know. Oh, uh, you're lying. You were heading for the back country after the gold. You talk. There, he's made it again. We'll come back for him later. Cut him down. John Whitney? Whitney? Boss, somebody's taking white man away. Admiral? Captain? No, I haven't seen him since the fire. Why? He headed into the jungle some time ago. He may find Black Mike's camp. Mike will be able to handle him. Well, he might get to the old man Black Mike picked up. The old man talks, the captain may beat us to the gold. Rand knows as much about it as the old man, probably more. Rand has the map. That's our best clue. So, we go after Rand and the map. Why not? Go get Singapore and then contact Rand. All right. Captain, we've been worried. That jungle takes a lot of exploring, Jerry. Night, it's a pretty grim job. Have you seen Rand? He got up before I did this morning, and I haven't seen him since. No, I haven't. He has a habit of wandering around. He'll show up soon. I hope your wandering around was worthwhile, Captain. I have news for you, Ann. There's a white man being held prisoner in the camp in the jungle. I tried to bring him back with me, but ran into a little trouble. Whose camp is it? Some of the Admiral's men, I'm sure. Up to no good. Do you think the man might be my father? It's possible. Fits your father's general description. Then we've got to go to him. She's right. 
It's a job for two people only. You're willing to come along with me, Bartman? Please take me with you. I guess you would be the best one to identify your father at that. You two stand by here, wait for Rand. I suppose we should be here to explain your absence to Rand. Next time I'm going with you, Captain Silver. people I have working for me, it's just as well I don't depend on the profits that this plan takes me for my income. Yes, what is it, Murdoch? Something's in the wind. All right, I'm listening. The captain and the girl are out to get lost in the wake of Black Mike. They think the old boy may be your father. It means the captain's located the camp. Warn Black Mike to take care of the captain, and under no circumstances let him get near Lawson. Let me have him, Admiral. The captain's my meat. You stay here, Singapore. What about the girl? Have her returned here unharmed. the fight. The camp's nearby. Let's hurry. What are you doing here? Uh, my name is Walter Lawson. I was prospecting the island. Those men captured me and brought me here. They thought you were looking for the lost Spanish treasure, didn't they? Yes, that's right. They tried to make you tell where the treasure is hidden? Uh, I, I told them I didn't know anything about it. I, I, I wouldn't let them know what I really discovered in the heart of this island. Got to get you out of here. The sooner the better. This place gives me the creeps. Gonna take you to a safe place. Can you walk? I think so. It's in that hut back there. Ran. Wait for me at the edge of the jungle. Peacefully as babies. For a while, it looked like we'd be the ones sleeping. We might need this. I don't know whether I'd be of much use, but don't you think we ought to go and try to find out what's happening? No, the captain said to wait. I'm sure he meant it. So when I got this message, supposedly from you, and I very stupidly fell into the trap. Here he comes now. Rand's with him. I'm 
glad you're both safe. Captain arrived just in time. Stanley Rand, Walter Lawson. How do you do? I think Mr. Lawson can help us find the Spanish gold, if you will. No man has lived to tell where it is. But Miss Whitney has told me of the use you plan to make of the treasure. So I've decided to show you what I have found inland. You want to make the trip now? I'd prefer to. But then we can get back to the coast. I don't feel like putting you to any additional hardship after your deal at the camp. Uh, when I leave this jungle, I'm never coming back to it again. Don't you think we ought to go back to the plantation let Lawson explain? I'm sure we could find the place. Well, I think not. You might look a long time. Now we're in this far, we'll go ahead. But if Jerry and Bartman were along, we'd be safer. Perhaps you'd prefer to return to the plantation, Rand. Let us go on alone. No, if you've decided to do it, I'll go with you. And you, Ann? I think we're wasting time. All right, we'll go this way. we're being followed. Oh, you're just jittery. There's nothing to be afraid of. Well, I hope you're right. Let's keep moving. get together, what will that mean to the others? What alarming news does this man bring? Don't miss Captain Silver's strategy, the fifth smashing chapter of The Sea Hound at this theater next week. rescues Rand and Lawson from the Admiral's slave camp. Hurrying back through the jungle to rejoin the others at the plantation, they're attacked by the dreaded killers of the jungle, Ryax. He's done for. We've got to find Ann.
Gardman got a beat on a couple natives and let them have it. Oh, they were evil looking, horrible. Like nothing I've ever seen before. I never saw a weapon like that. I saw something wind around the old man's neck and his head slumped and he fell to the ground. Neck broken. Another of the Admiral's tricks. No, I don't think so, Rand. This is a little known tribe and I'm not sure that even the Admiral could control them. But why should they want to kill you and Mr. Rand? For one reason, Jerry. They didn't want us to get out of the jungle with loss. That explains a lot of things. I don't get it. Well, Lawson admitted he knew about the gold. He'd been to the tribal country, so the gold must be there. They didn't want him to talk, so they killed him. Then the gold and my father are probably in the same place. That's right, Anne. When we find the one, we'll find the other. Those natives undoubtedly came from the interior. The treasure isn't inland, but on the coast. At least a part of it isn't on the coast. I went underwater to discover that. But the map, Captain, the key to the map's secret is a galleon. Yeah, what we still don't know is where that galleon is located. Well, it certainly isn't inland with any savage tribe. No, probably not. I'm still interested in those natives. You say Bargman wounded two of them? Their trail should be easy to follow. You mean you're going after them? Just Jerry and I. You take Ann back to the plantation. I think we should stay together. Oh, it'll be easier for two of us to break through the jungle. Besides, you'll have a job to do. To watch the Admiral. I'll do my best. Uh, be on your guard. We'll be back by nightfall. Come on, Jerry. Good luck. a searching party. Oh, we were just taking a walk through the jungle. <laughs> you always tell these Yankee sightseers. How would you those easy chairs look comfortable to you? A little cooling refreshment would be welcome, I'm sure. Ice lemonade tastes good after the heat of the jungle. Singapore. Serve my guests. To my guests. Well, I'd almost forgotten the captain and his young shipmate. Oh, they seemed even more interested in the jungle than we were. I suppose sailors would be. What do they expect to find there, Miss Whitney? I've no idea. The jungle doesn't seem to have treated you very kindly. Oh, it's nothing. I just have a slight headache. You know, the jungle can be very dangerous. Even deadly. From man or beast? Oh. If I were you, I'd keep out of it. Are we to consider that a threat? The jungle is always a threat, Mr. Ram. If you gentlemen will excuse me, I think I'll rest for a while. Singapore, have a lot take care of us with me. Thank you. I'll see you all later. flavor to our lemonade. Help yourself, gentlemen. Mr. Rand, I should like to make you an offer. An offer? Yes, to both you and your confederate, Mr. Varden. I suggest that we join forces. I'm afraid I don't follow you, Admiral. But I did follow you one night in particular on Typhoon Beach, where you met a friend. Shall we call him Mr. Whitney just to give him a name? You don't have to say any more. 
How you follow me. What can we gain by getting together? Do you less party searching for the lost treasure? But I don't know that there is any treasure. There's nothing for us to go on, separately or together. Uh, for my part, I should like to use that map you took from the man we called Whitney. I haven't the map with me. I know that, Mr. Rand. If you did, I'd have it by now. You see, I'm making a friendly offer. How do I know what'll happen when you get the map? When I'm forced to make a deal, I stand by it. But as long as I still have possession of the map, let's say, I'll think over your offer. And I might add, that goes for me too. Then I'd advise you to do your thinking quickly. I have a dozen men who are not only eager but anxious to get rid of the captain. I have an excellent supply of guns and ammunition. I control this island completely and I don't like opposition. Now you can either throw in with me or else. You see, I'm uh, asking you nicely. You mean uh, not like last night? That's right. Well, there's plainly no choice. Good. I'm glad to see you have sound judgment. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I have some accounts to go over. Help yourself to the lemonade. Are you going to throw in with him? We're playing ball with the strongest team. Right now, that's the Admirals. his crew on our side, things should go a lot easier. I promise he won't get away from you. As long as I can have him. You can, after I get through with him. I'm going back and watch him while I finish this work. We finally caught up with the natives, but it didn't do much good. You mean they got away? They were dead. Necks broken. Probably killed by their own people. They were pretty badly wounded and no further use to the tribe. Tribes are known to do that. We're lucky to be alive. To tell the truth, I won't be sorry to return to the ship. Well, there's nothing to stop us from starting right now. Where's Ann? I thought she'd be with you. Oh, she went to the house to rest. I'll tell her we are ready to leave. Right. Just a minute. There's that character that's so handy with a whip calling on the Admiral. It means more trouble. Let's get out of here while we can. No. I think it's time to put our cards on the table with the Admiral face up. You'll have to back me up with a show of force. That's not such a good idea. Don't forget that Ann Whitney's in the middle right now. I'll get her out of the house before the showdown. It's still an awfully long chance. It seems to me that you... Whose could... side are you on, Rand? Why, yours, of course. Get the guns loaded and stand by. Fool. Uh, there were too many to handle. I tried to stop them getting away with a fellow from the yacht. I'm not interested in him. You let them take old man Lawson. Well, I didn't know they were after him. He might have had important information regarding the treasure. Uh, I tried to make him talk. I had to take it easy. I didn't want him to pass out on me. I'm not so particular who passes out. Call him off, Admiral. Put that knife away. Put it away. I'll make good, Admiral. Just give me a chance. Don't be so anxious, Singapore. Expecting someone, Admiral? No, I sent Lon and Murdoch on an errand. Could possibly be the captain. Turn him over to me, Admiral. You can't outshoot him. Once you missed, we'd all be in a jam. Come in, Captain. Come in. Seems I, I haven't got my land legs yet, Admiral. I uh, apologize. No importance, just a piece of brick bric Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I heard a commotion. I uh, was a bit clumsy. By the way, Mr. Rand is waiting for you outside. I'll join you in a few minutes. I've heard some bad reports about you, Captain. 
from your uh, mess boy? <laughs> You're remarkable, Captain. Remarkable. Mess boy, you say? Yes, that he is. Did he tell you he tried to murder us? Well, forgive Mike, please. He doesn't have very good judgment. You mean because he let us get away? Your judgment is brilliant, Captain. I came to see you, Admiral, before we leave your uh, house, to make sure that we understand each other. And you think we do? Perfectly. And of course you know you're not going to leave here again. I know I'm not going to be driven off the island until I find John Whitney and the lost treasure. I said to be patient, Singapore, but I think it's your turn now. My friends are going to open up in the place unless I rejoin them in five minutes. That gives us three minutes, my lads. from this room and you're finished, Admiral. I better warn my friends before they ruin your house. I told you the captain was tough, but I think the jungle will stop him with a little help from us. Getting out of here. Buses isn't waiting for us to find them. We've got to get out of here before sundown. Come on. through this tangle. I save your ammunition, Rand. Don't fire until you see something to shoot at. Well, let's get out of this trap. We're moving as fast as we can. want us to get back to the sea house. Maybe it's the Admiral. He wasn't too friendly when I left. It's not the Admiral, it's natives. Why so sure, Rand? Too far away from the trail. Watch every step.
down into it. attempt to capture the sea hound succeed? What daring maneuver is Captain Silver planning now? See what happens in the Sea Hound at Bay, Chapter 6 of the Sea Hound at this theater next week. Silver outwits the Admiral and forces the latter to allow his entire party to leave the plantation. But the Admiral has marked them for destruction, and as they flee through the jungle toward the coast and the sanctuary of the Sea Hound, Jerry, I'm going to have to let you down into it. We've got to deal with the Admiral, haven't we? We hope. I get in with the most awful people. You got mixed up with the Kyanthus. The natives call it the man-eating vine. Jerry, you better stand watch. We'll be around here for a half an hour or so. You two better sit down and rest. Everything's all right down here. All right. 
right, bring the Chinaman up on deck. Right. And we'll take care of the dog, too. We'll signal text to pick us up. a little late. Thanks a cookie wouldn't be taken to see on the way, Captain. No, they wouldn't, Jerry. Do you think pirates have taken it? I have a good idea who's pirates. Looks like it puts us in a bad mess. We've still got a game to play. We're ready to lend a hand, Captain. I think I stand a better chance to find out what I'm after if I go alone. Jerry, stand by with the folks. If it gets dark, find a safe spot. I'll find you. Wake up, wake up. Why, Captain, how nice. I want some information fast, and I'm willing to pay $100 American for it. What is you want to know? Where's the Admiral's ship? $100 ain't very much. Oh, oh. There's a, a hidden inlet across the island. Take the trail across the isthmus. without a ship. <laughs> Pete, from now on, you're the captain of the sea, huh? Do you like that? Can't wait to set foot on a deck, Admiral. You'll be proud of the record we make. <laughs> aye, aye, Captain Pete. Help! Help! Looks like it comes from the Grove. See who it is. Albatross crew. Yeah. Come on. What happened to you? They took the Albatross. Who took the Albatross? Four men. Oh, surprise attack. The captain. I have to warn our men on the sea hound to stay away from Hidden Inlet. Pete, take care of him. I want to talk to him some more.
Better call Murdoch. See how it doesn't contact anybody. Not until she's turned over to the Admiral. Well, that signal hasn't let up. Might be the captain. We're not taking any chances on his picking up our bearings. Can't you shut the thing off? I like to hear the captain yell. Keep on sending till you contact Murdoch. I'm going to talk to a sailor. Sending for a while, pick it up later. There must be something else we can do. There is. Round up as many men as you can and take off in the two large boats. I can round up a dozen men in an hour. Good. Go after the albatross. You must get aboard her before she sights the sea hound. Right. communication on the sea hound. I've been trying to contact you all night. The captain has taken the albatross. Why don't you answer? Keep clear of the albatross. Pete is on his way in the boat.
much longer can Rand's treachery remain undiscovered? What new threat does this midnight prowler bring to the Sea Hound? For the answers, see Rand's Treachery, Chapter 7 of the Sea Hound at this theater next week. Sea Hound, but Captain Silver daringly seizes the Admiral's own ship, the Albatross, and gives chase. Unaware that Silver's party is aboard, the Admiral's crew allow the Albatross to come alongside and... Before they get too far away. Please compose self. Haste is enemy of good aim. Uh, 
Now we're back again on the captain's side. Our game is to cut down both sides. Then we'll step in and take the goal. Time now for good shooting. Cookie, you did a good job. It was swell. Humble person, prospered of such praise. Would suggest the Sea Hound have no automatic pilot. Holy smoke! Hey, let's go! Stand by to approach Diamond Cove. I'll get that map of the gold location from Silver. And then see what deal I can make with the Admiral. What makes you think Silver will give it to you? I'm not going to ask him. The map's mine, isn't it? Yes, but if he knows you've got it, he won't know it. Now take it easy and stand by. I'm grateful for everything you've done, Captain Silver. Well, I only hope we can find your father, help him locate the treasure. With the Admiral interested, it may be a little difficult. Why should you go to all this trouble for someone you scarcely know? <laughs> I feel like I've known you for a long time. What's cooking, Cookie? Work in progress is not culinary. I've made two careful copies of treasure maps. That's not a bad idea. Never put all eggs in one basket. Ancient American saying. Where's the original? In a safe place, no cause to worry. Good. to get it all right, but the captain sneaked up on us in your boat and tried to spare me the details. I can imagine what happened. I've tried to impress upon you what a clever opponent this captain is. To beat him, we must be more clever than he. He's smart, all right, but he gets all the breaks, too. A clever man makes his own breaks. For years, we've been trying to find this Spanish treasure, the location of which is on the map that Rand gave to the captain. Murdoch, I've listened to your last excuse get that map tonight.
Fletch. Fletcher, man, Fletcher. Come on. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Uneasy sleeps a person who owns nervous watchdog. Hey, Tex. Wake up. Something's wrong. Let's have a look around. I can't. safe. Both copies of the map missing. I noticed that. No doubt one of the Admiral's men. Unwelcome visitor was one who swam. Wet tracks on the deck. Wet tracks on the deck? Well, Tex and I will go ashore early in the morning. See if we can pick up his trail. In future, perhaps we give Fetch a strong coffee with his evening dog biscuit. Maybe then he will bark when the thieves come instead of after they leave. <laughs> All right. Tex, you stick around here. I want a chance to look around by myself for a while. Oh, this is a bad time to be moseying around alone. With a map in the Admiral's possession, why, he'd knock you off like that. If I get into any trouble, I'll holler. said to thank you for the tobacco you left me at the store. Uh, you didn't have to run down the beach to tell me that? That is true, monsieur. You mean there's something else, something more important? Yes, there may be. And I shall tell you whatever the consequences. I have heard a strange story from the interior about a white man who wandered into the jungle. This man was captured by Rayax while on hunting expedition. His life was spared only because he was not right in his mind. Even so, one of the Rayax wanted to kill him. The other insisted that he be taken to the settlement of the tribe. They journeyed toward a high escarpment beyond which the Ryaks lived. No white man has ever seen it and lived. This is the strange story I hear. You think maybe you can believe it? Myself, how can I know for sure? Maybe this mysterious white man is Anne Whitney's father. I don't wish to alarm you. What are you trying to say, Andre? If the story of the white man is true, and he regain use of mind, the Ryaks will kill him like that. Oh, where is this mysterious settlement? We gotta know where to begin to look. I do not remember that, monsieur. Andre, a man's life is at stake. Perhaps mine also. It is never good to speak too much of strange happenings on island. Maybe you'll remember tomorrow. I'll come back to see you then. Oh, 
Tomorrow, no one can be sure. Charlie? Uh, him, but then he go out. Did he say when he'd be back? No, he no say. Maybe quick, maybe slow. <laughs> I think I'll wait around for him for a few minutes. You like food, maybe? Very special item blue plate today. No, no thanks. One jump ahead of the captain. That's a break. Get set. if the Admiral actually gets the treasure map. What deep game is this that Rand is playing? Be sure to see in the Admiral's Lair, Chapter 8 of The Sea Hound at this theater next week.